So a while back when I was early and first into my career, I went and saw a chiropractor and he took mm -hmm. an x-ray of my neck and he drew a curve on my x-ray and showed me how my neck was too straight and that was going to lead to arthritis and some really bad things down the line. Does alignment actually, is it an actual indicator of arthritis and degenerative experiences later in life? That's a great question, and I'm going to take it step by step. Um, there's a lot into that. I could talk about it for a long time because obviously I'm a chiropractor. Um, the, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like what you're saying is that you were told that this is not the way it should look, and we're going to do this treatment to make it look better, and as a result, you should feel and move and optimize your whole well-being, so on and so forth. Yeah, basically they told me I was out of alignment and that if I didn't get back into alignment, my life would suffer. Okay. All right. So first answer for that question is no. Your just be uh, alignment is relative. Like a lot of stuff that we talk about um, with muscle scuttle, we talk about deep tissue massage releases and a lot of other things in our in our realm. It's relative and it depends. Um, but I'll clarify a little bit more about what we know, what we don't know, and what's kind of gray area in between. Um, alignment is relative. Um, if you if you want to say that right now my finger is in alignment and right now it's out of alignment, sure. But it depends what's the relative alignment. My finger being straight, okay. Uh, if I'm sitting up tall, but uh, but instead say this is my neutral or this is my alignment. But if I'm slouched, that's out of alignment. Or if I'm dipped back, that's out of alignment, sure. But if you take a look at a static image, a picture like an x-ray and say that, well, this is out of alignment, unfortunately, it's a nice narrative. It's a nice thing to say and you can show with the visual and it's an x-ray. So there's a lot of, you know, um, a lot of theatrics behind it. But unfortunately, there's no significant scientific literature that says that the way your spine looks at an image um, correlates or dictates how you feel from a pain standpoint. Um, it's interesting, I mean, you can take the image of a spine of a 15-year-old adolescent and then a 80-year-old person and you look at their, their x-rays and it's completely different. One looks like a mess and the other looks perfectly clean. Yet both those people can have back pain. One could have back pain and one could not and vice versa. I see plenty of kids or athletes that you get an x-ray I and mean, I typically see them after they've gotten an image and they're like, well, we've tried this and tried that and that's why we referred to you now because you know we weren't sure where else to go. It tends to happen with how uh, I work. Um, so when you have a adolescent with significant back pain, yet they have nothing on their image. And then you also take an 80 year old that's never had back pain, but if you were to image them, which they won't because they're not in pain, but if you were to image them on x-ray or MRI, you're going to see, see uh, excuse me, you're going to see significant degeneration, arthritis, um, you know, spurs, tears, well, lots of little degenerative type changes. But what we're finding is that a lot of that is really just as we get wrinkles and gray hair on the outside, we also get that on the inside. So just because you have an image that looks a certain way does not dictate your pain experience. So because x-ray and MRI is not a great way to die, looking at alignment in that fashion, it's not a great way to diagnose someone with pain. Um, I don't even look at it at all. So if someone had an accident, they got hit by a car, God forbid, or they had a traumatic fall, yes, get an x-ray or an MRI or something else to make sure something's not structurally damaged or impaired. Um, however, if it's like most people I, that, see, that I see that come in and say, yeah, I have no idea, it just came out of nowhere. Or when I sit down for a long period of time, it starts to hurt. There's no trauma with it. I don't need to see an image, right? So um, taking a picture, like, so let's use a metaphor. Um, or if you, uh, the door is right here, you guys can't see it, but if I sent you a picture, I text you a picture of a door hinge, do you know how well that moves? The answer is no. You actually have to move the darn door because whether it looks beautiful or it's rusted out, it could be off a millimeter and things not gonna move well. Well, you can't determine that from an x-ray or an image. You have to move someone. We're, we're dynamic beings. We have to test out our movement and mechanics and see how our body's functioning. Now, yes, you could take an, an image, an x-ray, and you could say, well, that's out of alignment, a millimeter, like I said, with the door hinge. And if someone doesn't move well, but here's the thing. You could get someone better, take that image afterward, and the image doesn't change at all. Right, so just because you have something like a disc bulge or degeneration or arthritis and someone's experiencing pain, we don't take these things afterward, these images, and a lot of times we're, what we find in the scientific literature, they don't change. So someone could come to see me and they have a disc bulge. 
and they have disc-like symptoms, right? I treat them, they're completely better, and let's say they go and get another image, which it doesn't happen, but let's say they do. Very likely they're gonna get that image again and there's gonna be no changes structurally, right? So what's happened? We just changed the body's mechanics and we've reduced their bo the pain perception, right? A lot of these minuscule things that happen neurologically is not because of structural change. That disc bulge may not be the pain generator. Maybe it's just there. It's just a normal variant. And their pain was because of something else. For example, my finger, if I pull it back, I feel a stretch. If I hold it here for a while, ouch, that hurts. What do I do to stop make it hurting? Let go of it. Right? Very obvious. So many people, what we're doing is that we're in sustained positions and postures and doing the same thing over and over again. It's like on our back, sitting like this is like putting this tension on the finger. Well. Let's go to the the disc bulge thing. Let's imagine I have something in my finger. Well, this one I do because it's broken, but not this one. Let's say that my finger is starting to hurt because I'm pulling it back. By taking an image of this, what, the way we approach back pain with imaging is like someone imaging this finger here and saying, oh, the problem with your finger hurting right now is because there's something that's broken in there, right? Yes, I have a structural problem here, but my structural problem, my finger is not the reason why I hurt. Right? So let's bring this all back in full circle. Okay? Alignment is relative. Um, we are dynamic moving creatures. We can, my finger can be here, it can be here, it can be here. However, in a general neutral, somewhere in between, not too much, not too little, just right, is where we want to be. So when we're sitting, yes, we want to be in a better alignment, meaning nice and upright, because we can sustain that longer, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? We don't want to be here long, we don't want to be here long. But we're still dynamic and moving, meaning that we don't, we can't be in one position for a long period of time. When we're lifting weights, like a deadlift or a squat, there is a neutral or an ideal we'd like to be in. Yes, can we lift something and be in a really crappy position and get through it? Yes, we're resilient creatures. However, we don't want to do that as a habit, right? And so being in a neutral or a better alignment with lifting is important. But is it life or death? No. So alignment is a broader picture in my opinion. It means that it's living in neutral as much as possible, but also being able to experience and being able to handle the outer limits, the end ranges. Okay, so if I understand what you're saying, first, the chiropractor who x-rayed me and drew on all of the curves and said that I need to get adjusted to improve my alignment was doing a whole lot of theatrics and that like you explained with the door hinge, the x-ray of my spine doesn't indicate the mobility or movability of it, and that really uh, pain doesn't have much to do with that structure. 100%. I've seen it way too many times that for, for someone comes in and they said, I've seen a chi previous chiropractor. They told me I needed XYZ visits for a certain period of time. Typically, it's three times a week for three months. If, if they're selling you a package, please run away from those people. Um, and... They say, yeah, I've got significant degeneration arthritis. I have a reverse curve and, and I'm out of alignment in my neck and so on and so forth because they took the image, right? And that's what makes sense to them because they also have a loss of range of motion in their, in their neck. So when they turn, this is fine. And here, oh, it's stuck. Or I can barely move here. Well, here's the thing. I work with someone for a few visits or a handful of visits and they go from that. They go from being stuck here and stuck here to I have my range of motion back, right? but nothing has changed structurally. And if you re-X-rayed them, you're telling me that it probably doesn't look any different on the X-ray? Depending on the time, if it's a period of six weeks, you know, or a few weeks, absolutely not, right? And here's the thing too, if depending on how they set them up on the X-ray, there's variance in that too. What if you tell them, all right, stand in front of the X-ray machine, and you're not doing a very good job of putting them in certain positions, So right? there's a lot of variability to X-rays. They may or may not change, but they don't correlate much to your pain response. 100%, right? Pain is not dictated upon the structure. Just like my pain is dictated on what I'm doing to my finger right now, not what, what's in my finger on this broken one here, right? And another, uh, to throw another piece in that too, is that what they did a study with radiologists and they gave them um, MRIs, a set of them. They gave 100 radiologists, I think it was 100 or so, all to diagnose or to read the radiology and give a report. There's variances upon reports as well. So not only do you have variances in images of, of people and what they have going on inside and their own pain perception, you also have variances in the people reading them as well. So imaging, what it comes down to, it's a piece of the puzzle, 
It helps us diagnose and treat and get people to the right place or doing the right thing, but it's a piece of it. It should not replace clinicians and diagnosticians and um, someone who's a professional at help or professionals working together to be able to figure out what is b actually best for this person and not best for their pocketbook or just because this is how we've always done it. So I want to come back to something you said because I think it's really important. So what I think I hear you saying, and correct me. Sure. X-rays and MRIs have a lot of variability to them based on positioning and cueing. So how somebody sets you up in front of the X-ray machine could really determine whether or not alignment, how the alignment looks to it. In that X-rays and imaging also have a variability based on who's read them. So it's kind of a almost opinion. We're not, it's not a computer that's reading them and saying, oh, here's, here's this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. It's more of a person saying, well, that's my perception or that's my opinion of the position of this. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And even, well, and to take a step further, even let's say that um, someone takes a, you know, a perfect image set up perfectly, so on and so forth, and an image was reported by, let's say everyone agreed upon this report, this person has this problem. Still, if it's relevant or not, you don't know until you test out that person. I've seen plenty of structural problems in the spine, specifically something like a spondylolisthesis, which is basically just a shift in one vertebra over another. And a lot of times they're found and saying, oh, well, that must be the pain generator. Because of that, you can only do certain things. I've seen plenty of times that someone has a back problem and they get better regardless of their structure. Was it because we're addressing that structural problem and that was the problem? I don't know. Was it because that structural problem had nothing to do with the issue whatsoever? Because regardless of their structure, i.e. my finger, it hurts because there's tension being put on the system, the body's feeling that. I don't know. But it comes down to going through the assessment and figuring out what does this person need, what they don't need, and then basically problem solving, right? Figuring out is this a mechanical or musculoskeletal problem that we can help them with? And if it's something I can't help them with based on my assessment, we gotta get them to the right spot. You know, take it step by step. So that's great news, guys. Um, your alignment, you're not out of alignment. And if you are, it might have been because of the way that the image was taken or the position that you were in for that mm -hmm. image. It Just because an MRI said that you were out of alignment could have been the opinion of the radiologist who may or may not regularly read images of that joint. So it could be a variability with the imaging itself or of the reading of that image. And then finally, it sounds like that image doesn't necessarily correlate to pain or ability. So it's only imaging is only one piece of the puzzle. It has to be tested afterwards to determine what uh, what percentage of importance does that imaging actually have. 100%. And, and, and I'm going to clarify, if you had an, an, like a car accident and you get an MRI and something significantly impaired, like a fracture, a pull, tear, like significant injury, okay, it's very obvious how that happened, right? But the problem is most imaging like MRIs and x-rays and so on and so forth are for people with musculoskeletal pain, so muscle and joint pain, nerve pain, without a specific injury mechanism. Most, like 90%, I'm making up a number, but probably... I feel about 90%, if not more, of people that I see and I ask them, so, you know, what happened? How did this occur? I don't know. It came out of nowhere. It wasn't a specific incident. They might say, oh, maybe it could have been from working out because I felt it the next day, or maybe it could have been this, but I really don't know, right? So when it comes to those I don't know type problems that have been going on for a while, we cannot diagnose with imaging alone. All right. Bottom line. Great information. I'm going to keep going on this because this is something interesting that I think people should probably understand. Um, even if a tear does show up in an image, does that mean that it needs to be surgically repaired? <laughs> that is a great question. Um, a great point as well. And, the, and I have personal experience with this and the answer is no. Um, it depends. I'm not a surgeon, so I can't give complete insight into this. But just because you have a major te major tearing doesn't mean you have to have surgical repair. There's sometimes you ac absolutely can't. Like with my situation, it was a torn pec and it wasn't pulled. The tendon was not pulled from the bone, um, or the whole muscle belly wasn't pulled away. It was just a partial tear. So they're not going to take individual muscles and they're not going to go and repair that. So I have a structural change in my pec now, and I have compensation as a result. 
and I deal with it. It's not life or death by any means. I just have to make some small modifications, right? But um, so these things can happen like with your hamstrings, happen with your pec. They can happen with all sorts of different areas, uh, you know, your Achilles. If you have a partial Achilles rupt a tear, sure. I mean, you could probably get away with just, you know, rehabbing it appropriately. But if you have a full rupture, yes, those things, they're probably, they're not, I shouldn't say probably, they're going to need to be repaired. Um, there might be some variants in there. That's not my expertise, but the, you're based on your question. No, just because you have actual structural tearing or damage doesn't absolutely mean that you need surgery. Great for all of us to know that if there's some damage doesn't necessarily mean that that it has to be repaired or that your rehabilitation is going to look uh, st tremendously different based on the imaging alone. All right. Any last words on imaging and alignment? If you feel you're out of alignment, change it. Move. You're a dynamic creature that doesn't have just one position. Try exploring all of them.